Sometimes software has a single job to do. A one job only. And then sometimes that job gets um, a little a little uh, caught up in the weeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're like, hey, if I open you, click record, and then save, will you make a sound file? And it's like, yes. Okay. Thanks, uh, man. Cool. Uh, will you also send my data to China through Russia? And God knows where else. And, and, and the police. And the answer is, we'll get back to you on that. Are you over 13 or not? And then you go, you know what? I think I'll take my business elsewhere. So to those of you who don't know about the audacity of this shit, Audacity, the audio program that almost everybody uses because it's free and it's good, just said, hey, the next update, we're going to store all your personal data in, like, Russian servers, and then if your cops ask for it, we'll just give it to them. I actually think it was discovered because of the um, please stop using this software if you're under 13, uh, like, update to oh, the it's EULA. All, it's all in there. It's, and then, like, it's all... Yeah, but that was the first that was the first eyebrow raiser. And then when they're like, What's the problem with thirteen year olds using audio software? And it's like, Well, well you can't collect data of anonymous thirteen year olds legally and send it to other countries. And it's mm -hmm. like, uh okay. Right. Uh, I was just So this podcast is now powered by Dark Audacity. Currently, which is a branch that uh yeah. Uh, popped up as the alternative. I did see other alternatives depending on what your purposes are, you know? Um, yeah. I think Mega Ran was suggesting something that was like f possibly for more musical uses, but mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. for, for what we needed for this, this shot of, ought to do the trick. I do find it um, it's such a weird thing because I was explaining to Punch Mama a, 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 mo a moment ago about this whole thing. And it's like, yeah, for about a decade now, I've been using this free program because it's light, simple, and does the job, right? And it turns out that in many cases, the more expensive uh, uh, program, which I'm willing to pay for if it'll do the job, will always be bloated with features and memory leaks and all kinds of problems that, like don't actually help with the basic function and in many cases i used gold wave a couple times and it sucked i don't hate gold i use no i like gold wave but i use gold wave for a different thing gold yeah wave, i mean for my purposes it was like infuriating yeah for me gold wave is for like a bunch of it's for like post processing but live gold wave capture i i don't i don't use the features for that at all it does great for post processing though um but I, but I, I'm talking about more so like the the difference between let's say an OBS and an XSplit, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're like, okay, the the thing you've made here is now going to load with a heavy startup thing that connects, checks for all its updates, and then it's also gonna run through a bunch of other shit that you're not gonna need, and then there's gonna be a memory leak so that after like two or three hours of using it, your whole shit's gonna slow down and crash, and you don't know why. And That's it's like, good. That's good. Someone you want that gets frustrated takes a week to make their own simple thing that just does the job and then that becomes the thing that people use because it just does the fucking job i think I, it's really funny in audacity's case because audacity up until the very last release was an open source uh sound recording program and so like even though whatever company bought audacity and will continue to whatever audacity in the future you can't unopen source every version before this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't. There's always going to be v variations of Audacity that are free, like Dark Audacity or whatever other branches you want that are just floating around that everyone will tell you to use instead of the official one. Unless they go back and do shit. But, like, for now, it seems if you don't update, then you won't catch any of this. But it's like, eh, let's just be safe and uninstall it on everything anyway i mean sometimes shit uh, just update yeah um so i'm reminded of like how the battles between vlc supporters and media player classic supporters can rage with all the fire of a thousand furies forever but they're both simple small video players that you drag a, vi a video into and it'll play the video and 
both exist out of a time when Windows Media Player officially of would try course. to download new album covers, take five minutes to connect and see what's going on in your library, ask you for the fourth time if you want to sync up your your new uh, your new CDs, you know, or or uh, in a more or in some other cases, fucking Apple QuickTime is going to open up and show you the new. Uh, fucking trailer for some shit you didn't want to watch and it's going to take another five minutes because of the heavy UI and all this other background processing shit. It's like, for the love of fucking God, can it just have a play and a stop button with a volume knob? You know? I think I think the ultimate version of this, and I know you feel this pain, I'm going to hold up my telephone. This is my cellular phone. It's a Samsung Galaxy whatever. I forget which one it is. The explicit reason why I have Android phones and will always use Android phones is because of multiple evenings of me screaming at my computer because iTunes would not just put a goddamn song on my phone. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. just eyes bulging, yep. screaming. Yeah, I just want to drag and drop this fucking OC remix album onto my fucking phone. Pop God up, damn it. Pop up like a hard drive and drag it in there. Nope, we have to stand in between and play bouncer between you and your own shit every time, no matter what, no matter what device. And for a while, it wasn't just Apple. It was like if you had um, any of the other like pocket music players, like a creative zen I think was like mm -hmm. one of the few ones that came out that like was kind of saying advertising that like you can just drag and drop, but it did still have proprietary software. Um, you know, the zooms and shit. There was a bunch of stuff where it was all about like, no, you need middleware to s install your MP3s. We know you just want to drag and drop, but that's the point is the point is fuck you. The point is, is we're going to make sure you're using our software. You know, uh, it, it, it became like, the number one thing that I, I kind of felt like I'm like, that's like the end device would be the one that you plug into a computer. And again, just a hard drive pops up and then you drag things onto it and then it'll just that's that's the final black box. And somewhere along the lines, multiple companies must have realized that, like, you can't give that much freedom. You have to brand it. You have to own it. You have to make sure that you can verify it and check whatever is being installed for for you know i mean obviously there's the pirating purposes and then there's everything else they want to do data step metrics blah 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 you're giving all that away for ease of function and use and, and convenience and that's not okay i remember a vivid period in time i feel like it was a six month to one year period in which the psp with a decent SD card was unironically the best media player you could buy. Hmm. Like, because, because of this. It had a big screen, you put your headphones in, and it worked well, and you just dragged and dropped shit into whatever folder, and that was it. Yeah. It, it really is, like... It really is just frustrated peep programmers who can make a simple solution to all of this gar garbage are, are the people who save the day in many, in many, many instances for video players, for media, for all these things. You just, you come along with a media player alternative, quick time alternative, media player classic. You just fucking open it and it works, you know? Um, hey, and you know what? Shout outs to Winamp version two. Hmm. I used that for like a full decade after version three came out. And version 3 had all that bullshit in it. And, like, all you do is you drag the fucking music into the little playlist and it played the fucking music. That's Warning. all I wanted it to do. Warning. Critical Windows update. You must re restart Windows. Huge, big, important update coming through. Guys, don't miss it. It's massive. Security functions. We added weather to the start menu. You can, you, and when you highlight it, it's going to show you pop news now. Weather pop couldn't, news. Couldn't. Important update. It fast enough. Critical security. You must know that the weather is going to be fine tomorrow. Well, the, the trick is that they actually bundle in the actual security update with that bullshit.
So you get yes. to have the choice of a nice a holes computer and a, a slightly less holes computer with a little bar that I just screamed at and tried to figure out how to turn off as fast as possible. I would wager a couple bucks that not a single person on this planet saw that feature and went, Hey, cool, yay. I want this. I can tell you one person that I want, would have liked that. I bet you every single person who has ever seen that immediately went, How do I turn this off? No. My dad would have Bonzi buddy. It. Bonzi buddy Boyman. Yeah. <laughs> My dad would have been like, Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, Papa Bonzi Buddy Boyvin. Yeah. All right. Because right. you got too many games on there. All right. He's my friend. He is useful. Ah, oh, he's cute. Dad, get the shit off the family computer. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's your All game's right. making the computer slow. Sure. He's my buddy. Oh. Uh, <laughs> fine. Anyway, so uh, Audacity was quite hilarious with their naming choice the entire time, <sighs> and now literally with the Audacity of this. But they were purchased by some other company that decided to do this, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, why don't you, you ever get your dad like a Tamagotchi? Just get him like a fucking Bonzi buddy Tamagotchi. No, he'd be like, what is this? What is this shit? Put a search engine in it. I legit. Do you ever, you ever go over to see somebody's computer, and like, I've seen this once, and like they have like the five toolbars, the five search bars coming down off the top of the browser. Yeah. And you're just <sighs> like, oh, yeah, oh those days. God, oh no. There's, there's, yeah, there is that one <laughs> screenshot of like, it's just like just browser cancer. In that one screenshot of like yeah. 80 toolbars. But no, I did. I I swore off running tech support for my mom for a while. Because I just, I hit a point where I'm like, I can't. I can't do this. If I'm there in person, I'll take a look. But this is, it's like, it's just, it's, it's too much. You Everyone knows. You get it. It just, I couldn't. And my mom, to her credit, only asks me in person. Okay. Like, no, it was round the clock, but blowing up the, the phone, text, every format, every medium, whatever. It was just, it was, anyway. And um, she recently needed some important documents, like, taken care of and shit. So, I'm like, okay, let's, let's do this. And then I set up the, like, all right, let me, let's see it, screen share, remote desktop. And then you connect and you just, oh, no, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Ooh, it wasn't good. Yeah, it was. See, I, mm. I actually have to run tech support for mm. my mom specifically because she's not even the one who asks me. My dad asks me to run tech support for my mom mm -hmm. so that they don't have a fight <laughs> because it's like a it's a guaranteed situation where she asked my dad how to do something and he's like fine and then he shows it to her and she's like I don't understand and then it starts mm. so instead when I'm over there the mom asks me if she can if I can show her how to access her email or what have you and it always goes the same way where I explain it and I show it and then I give it to her and I explain it as she does it. And then she goes, okay. And then before I leave, I ask her to do it and she can't do it. And so then I write down on a notepad every single conceivable yep. step. Yep. And then I get a call later that night that one of the steps wasn't clear enough. And now she's lost in her Chromebook. Correct. Yeah, it's like, can we start, can we start with turning on auto arrange desktop icons and align them to grid no we need them no we need them just no i like i like them where they are i like <laughs> them where they are they just just poured out on top of each other and yep okay 
all right? And if you, God forbid, you actually auto-arrange it, then you've moved to where the things that she knows where they are now. And that's, anyway. I've um, moved on to no desktop icons. Correct. That's the actual answer. The actual answer is it should be the artwork and maybe a recycling bin. You know? But, uh, here we are. Back in the day, I remember when it used to be, like, fancy-ass edgy desktop to match my Winamp wallpaper would also... Oh, yeah! ...would also have a section for where your icons should go. You know? Yeah. There was a whole... There was a, a whole rhyme and reason to it, you know? But, uh, we've now gotten to the point of, like, no, no icons, no desktop. There is no desktop. Open a folder if you must. We left my mom alone with the computer for one hour back in 1999. And we came back and she had deleted the recycling bin. Yeah, yeah I, I remember this somehow. <laughs> yeah. And I know you can't technically delete it. She must have moved it somewhere. But, but yeah. I legit was not able to fix it. It took my dad all night to find where the fuck it was or mm -hmm. how to get it back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't know how she did it. it fucking lives on in, in fucking infamy in my mind forever. She must have dragged it into some fucking folder and then deleted the folder or freaked out or some shit. Oh my god. You know, we could talk Old shit people, about... Old people, huh? Yeah. Fuck them. As I lean back on my orthopedic chair. Um, hey, man. I've got a great segue into a story this week of me laughing at old people. Because well, they was, don't know how to computers. But if I, you got I, something. I did want to make a point. I wanted to say that um, the, the as far as software, like, jumping the shark goes, at bare minimum you do have to give it up for real player because it was a piece of shit format and player and entire experience, but it never pretended to not be selling your shit to other countries and spamming you with ads. Real player was garbage from day one, but it was honest. You got a, you got a banner ad the moment you opened it, some dude yelling at you about what you were about to play or watch, and a bunch of stupid buttons to click on that were too fancy, so they didn't really work. And it and and it would it would buffer offline videos. It was terrible. It was terrible. But it it I told you right away. My experience with Real Player was I wanted to watch the movie trailer off the official movie website, and you could only watch it with Real Player for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I would then download real player to watch it and it wouldn't work and i would go god fucking damn it god damn you and uninstall it until the next time i wanted to try and watch a movie uh, trailer off the website yeah yeah that was that was quick time for me it was like you got you got to watch it well you have to install the latest quick time yeah you, you, what are you doing without it and it's gonna install itunes it's gonna yeah. Oh, you don't want the Apple installer? No, no, no. I want specifically. No, no, no. Just get the Apple installer. We'll just in, we'll install Apple. Don't worry about it. 